Hey y'all, here are OS Reviews. A couple of years back, we checked out a 1TB hard drive that was designed to back up content on an iPhone or iPad. So these hard drives have been on the market for a number of years now, but of course there are a few issues, one of them being that they are using a mechanical or spinning drive, which can sometimes be more fragile as a moving part. It can fail over time more easily, and if you accidentally drop it, chances are it's going to break much more easily, not to mention it is a much bulkier type of storage device. That was the norm back in the day. And and so a few years later, and thankfully SSDs have now become a lot more popular, along with flash storage solutions. So today we're taking a quick look at a model from Afrio called the P10, and similarly this is a 1TB drive, but now it is extremely slim and lightweight since it is using SSD with no moving parts. It's still designed to be compatible with modern iPhones in addition to laptops and tablets alike using USB Type-C, making it great for backing up files, and alternatively if you are picking up a Pro Edition iPhone and you're trying to shoot videos from your phone camera in 4K, as you guys know, the files can be really large in size, and so it, this can be helpful for augmenting some of that if you connect it directly to your phone, particularly since iPhones and certain flagship devices don't have a expandable micro SD card slot, so something like this is going to be your best bet. Similarly, for many ultra-portable laptops that might only have a single Type-C port, this can also help augment some of that storage without requiring any dongles or adapters. And best of all, this is now much faster in terms of read and write speeds as well, promising up to 2,000 megabytes per second, all in a package which is just a fraction of the thickness as well as the weight of, again, one of those mechanical spinning hard drives. It really seems like night and day we've come a pretty long way in miniaturizing storage technology, and this model also is MagSafe compatible. So whether that's the latest generation iOS devices or we have an Android phone that has a MagSafe sticker attached, you're able to pop it onto the back of your phone, similar to a Qi wireless charger pad when it's not in use. Now otherwise we have just a simple Type-C port here at the very end along with a status LED light that will flash when it's being read and inside of the packaging we get two Type-C cables. Uh, one which interestingly has kind of an L-shaped end which is designed to snap into place a little bit more seamlessly onto a smartphone and then attaching it onto the back of the phone when you're not using it compared to the other one which is a standard longer cable that might be helpful if you're trying to plug it into a computer or a tablet. Taking a quick peek at the product page here, they actually have various configurations, including one called the P08 series that has a smaller storage space if you don't need as much as 1 TB. You can instead opt for 256 gigabytes as the minimum, up to 512 gigabytes, and it comes in two colors, either blue or kind of a light purple shade can also be found. These drives are still MagSafe compatible, but instead have a slightly lower read and write speed, up to 550 megabytes per second, compared to, again, over 2000 on the 1TB model. But depending on your needs, you can find these different configuration tiers, good for recording videos on latest generation iPhones, as well as transferring onto any standard computer, whether it's Windows, Linux, Mac, OS, Android, Chrome OS, so on and so forth, can read it as long as it has a Type-C port. Alternatively, the P10 has even larger configurations. If 1TB isn't sufficient, you can find 2TBs, and there's even a 4TB model as well. It looks like quantities are going to be more limited, but it's pretty crazy that you can now find a drive that is as large as 4TBs that fits in the palm of your hand, slides into a pocket super easily, and again, this one is using an M2 MVNE drive inside, supporting USB 3.2 speeds Gen 2. This solid state drive can also be used with gaming consoles, including the Steam Deck, as well. Well, it's crafted out of full aluminum, so very sturdy, and again comes in a few different colorways including white as well as gray, matching the design language of many Apple products, as well as a blue aluminum version is available as well. And it looks like their site currently has a 20% off discount happening around the holiday shopping season which can bring the cost down lower to around 120 for the 1TB one, but it's less than 50 bucks if you go for the 256 gigabyte version instead. The larger capacity you get, obviously the cost will increase as well. Some additional top line specs include claimed up to six times faster read and write speeds compared to some of those spinning hard drive disks. And although the main focus of our video here is going to be on this P10 model, I'll also point out that in the past couple of months, it seems like the popularity of these magnetic SSDs have started to increase. I've seen a couple of other models already that have been pretty successful, including one from DotCase, which has a very similar concept, but this one is a modular one that has a built-in screen that can also tell you the read and write speed, because it doesn't come with its own built-in storage. Instead, similar to on a computer, you have to pop in your own 
SSD storage, similar to if you disassemble a laptop, you can pop in your own M2. So it's basically acting as an enclosure with a Type-C port that then plugs into your phone. So you're able to use some of the components in a computer and just read it back on your phone with this adapter. The benefit of this model is that you can swap those SSDs in and out, so if you need more space, you can go that route in the future. So it's a bit more modular and easier to repair. Although potential downside include having a slightly thicker chassis because it has to unscrew to fit in the components instead of being a unibody build, and perhaps being a little bit more expensive as well if you're getting the enclosure plus your own 1TB SSD that you have to pick up separately to pop in, even though it is a very cool concept to have to omit. So the point being that these type of MagSafe adapters and accessories are no longer only restricted to just wireless chargers or cheap pads, but these days you can even find these storage solutions pretty readily. Anyways, here's a final size comparison with some other devices that you can pop it onto when you're reading it. Of course, you still have to plug in the cable. We're not really in the advent of wireless data transfer SSDs might one day become the norm, but it's not here yet. At least if you're looking for faster speeds, you have to still plug in that Type-C port. So anyways, let's test it out by quickly validating the read and write speed. To do that, I've plugged it into the Type-C port of a computer. Similar to any USB thumb drive or SD card, it will be just automatically recognized, of course, and taking a quick look at some of the properties, Interestingly enough, it seems like the free space or capacity of the drive is listed here as 953 gigabytes, and this phenomenon is often attributed to the file formatting, and this is apparently normal if you're doing the math as well as the conversion in the end. As another analogy, it's similar to stores pricing things as $99.99 rather than $100 to make us feel like we're actually getting a little bit more than our money's worth, aka these manufacturings calculating volume based on 1,000 megabytes per GB, but in reality, computers will actually be counting 1,024 megabytes per GB. And that small difference becomes magnified the larger the space of the SSD is, so that is why we see in this instance around 950 gigabytes free. So Although I wouldn't say it's a problem unique to only this particular brand, it is something worth keeping in mind if you're getting a 1TB drive. We have a software installed called Crystal Disk Mark. It's basically writing a sample 1GB file over to the drive and testing out the read as well as the write speeds. And as the test is in progress, you can tell the light starts to blink when it is currently reading as well as writing. And by the way, this also serves as a power key. So if you long hold on this button for a couple of seconds, you can manually turn the drive on and off. For instance, if you're connecting it to a tablet or a phone and you don't want to be draining power from your device when it's not being used, but if you still want to keep it connected via the Type-C cable, you can instead turn the drive on and off using that power button. In most cases, I'm getting around 1,100 give and take read speeds and a little bit slower write speeds, which are just a touch under 1,000 megabytes per second. So to hit that maximum 2,000 megabytes per second, you have to be in really ideal scenarios, the drive can't be too hot, and you have to be, of course, connected to a device that supports Thunderbolt as well as USB 3.2 speeds, including the latest gen iPhones as well as some flagship grade computers, for instance. You'll definitely see moments where it approaches that maximum limit, but it dials itself down a little bit to also prevent overheating, things like that. And so on average, I am getting a little closer to 1,000 to 1,100. However, Again, these speeds are already extremely quick compared to traditional hard drives, even the flagship 7200 RPM drives only had a theoretical maximum of 100 megabytes per second. That was the fastest you could get in a spinning hard drive. In fact, even if these speeds were reduced in half, uh, reaching around 500 megabytes per second, it's already considered to be very fast for things like gaming, reading it directly from the drive, as well as for streaming back, recording video, things like that. And so the base version of the P with a 256 or 512 gigabytes can actually be already more than good enough for photography as well as storage purposes. In fact, you may actually end up looking at some more negligible differences that might not be quite as perceivable unless you are commonly dragging and dropping files which are maybe hundreds of gigabytes across the drive. This is just going to be a few seconds faster. So again, many of the SATA SSDs typically get around 500 megabytes per second on average. NVMe SSDs, including the one in here, getting even two times, if not three times the speed in more ideal scenarios. 
So the keyword there is up to 2000 MB per second on the packaging, but again, in real world practice, expect it to be a little bit lower. But even so, this already feels wicked fast in practice. In fact, loading up various media files, photos, videos, documents, and the like, it barely misses a beat, as you can tell there, without really blinking or thinking quite as much. In fact, just as a real world demo here, we have roughly a 120 megabyte file. Let's actually try dragging this over to the downloads folder from the drive over to the computer and just see how long it takes there to complete. And there we have it. It's already completed in really just a blink of an eye. Even deleting files, which are over 100 megabytes in size, as you can tell, they are almost instantaneous. Let's also try dragging this file back into the same drive and see how long it takes. There we go. It was transferred over in just a split second. So those synthetic benchmarks are one thing, and the real-world performance, as we saw there, translates into almost instantaneous speeds as you're dragging over most files. Let's take a quick look at some mobile devices next, starting with a Android smartphone, and you can tell that plugging it in, it's recognized the SSD here almost instantly. We can tap to go inside, view the file directory here, as expected, really without any problems, and easily drag and drop any files over. And so it continues to remain a pretty speedy performance, as you can tell there, thanks to the fast read and write speeds. And I have a sample image here. I can also move this over to the drive, just tapping on the SSD here. And then let's say I want to just move it onto the slot, making it pretty easy to back up these files onto the drive that you physically own in front of you instead of relying on cloud storage, for instance, if you want another alternative to that. And once finished, just remember to either turn the drive off or eject it using the software settings of the file manager before unplugging to safely eject the drive. And then similarly, is also try an iOS device, including this iPad. It will be again recognized and navigating over to devices, clicking on the drive that's been connected. We can once again see the same files that we just open up there earlier. So again, even though hard drives as well as thumb drives have been around for a number of years now, to see one which is so slim as well as have such large storage and pretty impressive read and write speeds for the most part, become more accessible is still a nice trend to see, particularly as Type-C becomes firmly the standard across all modern electronics, whether it's iPhones. Again, even Apple has adopted this as a standard on their tablets as well as phones over the past few gens. This remains a universal accessory that can be plugged into pretty much any platform computer, mobile device, and you're able to transfer those files back and forth. Keep in mind, though, to reach the, again, fastest speeds, you do need a device that has Thunderbolt or USB 3.2 support. I just point that out because if you have, for instance, the iPad 10th generation base model, technically it is only USB 2.0 using that Type-C port, which gets up to 480 megabytes per second. It's still very fast, but again, to get upwards of the 2,000 megabytes per second, your tablet, phone, or computer needs to have USB 3.0 speeds on that Type-C port. So that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Arifo P10. Again, this is a 1 TB fast USB 3 speed SSD up to 4 TBs of space that you have in your pocket that can attach magnetically onto the back of your phone, showing a growing trend of these SSDs, which are more reliable than spinning hard drives, as well as much more compact, become more accessible as there are more manufacturers creating models like these. So this type of accessory in general can be quite useful, again, if you are planning on shooting lots of videos on your phone camera, particularly, again, in 4K or 8K, you need a really fast drive to back those files onto. So you can check out more details if you're interested in this or some of the other alternatives in the links below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a pretty solid performing, again, ultra-slim, fast, portable MagSafe SSD. That has been the Arifo P10.